So we are busy with a series that's got to do with entering more of a supernatural lifestyle. And uh, we've been following the approach of looking at biblical characters that can help us to progress into more of the experience of supernatural living, which we've tried to emphasize that supernatural living is normal for a Christian. We are, in a sense, called to be naturally supernatural. And so this is the, the heart of the series is to stir that up. And so we've been looking at various things that can help us to progress. And today I want to talk about a fundamental key to progressing to more of the supernatural living, and that is hearing from God. I'd love to talk to you about hearing from God. And now, often when we read in the Bible that there are miracles and somebody did something and then this amazing breakthrough happened, we often miss a miracle before the miracle. And it's the miracle of a human being hearing the Almighty God speak to them to do something. You know, so there, there are so many times where we, we miss that. We get so consumed with the actual miracle itself that we miss the part before it. The miracle that Abraham heard God. I mean, he lived in a, a, a world that was full of pagans, and yet Abraham heard God say, leave. And so the great miracle of him leaving is what we focus on, but we miss the point that actually before he could leave, he had to hear from God. And when Peter got out of the boat, I mean, we're so amazed that Peter walked on water, but actually, the wonderful thing comes is he heard Jesus say, come. And so we can, we can go to Moses and the miracle that he threw his staff down in it and became the serpent on the ground. There was this miracle. But before that happened, God spoke to him. And we need to see that so often through the scriptures, God speaks first, and then there's somebody that responds. And so some of the cases in the scriptures was perhaps easier to imagine God speaking through an audible voice or some great sign and wonder. But in our day, there's a promise that we've been given that if we are God's children, we're going to be led by the Spirit. In other words, God wants to speak to us, to lead us into things that are naturally supernatural. And so one of the key people in the Old Testament that I find as somebody that heard to listen to the voice of God and then became a carrier of the word of God into the nation of Israel was the person Samuel. And so I'm going to be focusing on the character of Samuel this morning and be drawing some things from his life about hearing from God and growing in experiencing God's speaking to us. And from that, it leads to naturally living more in the supernatural. So just some background in case you've forgotten or, or don't know some of the story of Samuel. But Samuel's mom's name was Hannah. Her name means grace. And uh, sh she was going through some very difficult times. She was barren. She had family issues. It was not her fault. She was being picked on because she was barren. And many times you can read in 1 Samuel chapter 1, she wept before God. And uh, she wrestled with the thing before God. And so one day she goes into the, the temple of God in, the, in that particular context. And she goes and she starts to cry out to God. And tears are running down her face. And it says that she prayed, but no words came out of her mouth. She was just, her lips were moving, but no words were coming out. And it says she was praying from the heart. So much so that the, the, the priest sitting there thought she was drunk. And he rebuked her and said, why do you come in here if you're drunk? And she said, no, I'm not drunk, but I'm pouring out my heart to God. And she was praying that God would bless her and open her womb, that she could bear a child. And in that place, the priest says to her, God's heard your prayers. And she, it says her face lifted and she went and she gave birth to a son and she named him Samuel, which means heard of God. And so she gives birth to Samuel and uh, from the day... She was praying for a, a, a child. She committed that this child would be given to the Lord, to serve the Lord. And that's a remarkable thing. We'll touch on that just now. But she had in her heart that she wanted something from God, but then she's going to give it right back. And so she gives birth to Samuel. And from an early age, she weaned him. And when he was just, just old enough, she took young Samuel and she took him to the temple and she she dedicated him to the Lord to serve there, and he lived there in the temple of God. And uh, we, we pick up the account as a young boy. We know the story very well, but I, I, I want to just highlight some of the, the points in this 
this, this epic event in his life. As a young boy, we know that he was in a place where he was, had his little place where he was sleeping, and the old man Eli was the priest over the place there. He was in another room, and we, we know the account in 1 Samuel 3 where Samuel hears God speaking to him but doesn't know it's God. And he, he goes to the old man and he says, yes, did you call me? He says, no, it wasn't me. Go back to bed. He goes back. This happens three times. And eventually the old man says to him, listen, this is God speaking. He perceives that it's God. And he sends Samuel back and he says, when this happens again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And uh, Samuel does this and then God comes and speaks to him, to this young little boy. And uh, I want to read to you just the words that came there in 1 Samuel 3. But firstly, in, in the verse 1, it says there, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. So we need to understand there was a, a rareness of God speaking to the nation of Israel. And they were actually in deep trouble. There was so much trouble going on. But here's this little boy, and the word of God comes to him. And down in verse 10 of 1 Samuel 3, it says, And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Those words, I believe, are central to what I want to share today. But there's this wonderful thing that God is speaking, 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 and he's looking for those that will say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. And he goes on, and then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And God starts to entrust this young little boy with his words. And certainly, as we follow the life of Samuel through his journey, he played a major role. He played a role in seeing the the, the nation of Israel overcome their mortal enemies, the Philistines, and during the whole of his lifetime, while the one that could hear God was there, Israel was never again overrun by the Philistines while the word of God was speaking. And then we see the legacy that he left. He installed the greatest king Israel ever had, King David. Uh, I want to just relate to you that story as, as we find later on in his life this Young boy had grown old already. But we just see from his relationship with God and how God could speak to him. We know the story how God says to him, go to the house of Jesse. I want to select one of his sons as king. So he goes to the house of Jesse. And uh, Jesse now parades all his sons, starting with the oldest son in front of the prophet Samuel. But I'm amazed at this conversation Samuel has with God at that moment. I mean, just try and imagine the setting. So there must have been you know, quite a gathering of people there, and the prophet is in town, and, and he comes to the house of Jesse, and all these people are there, and he brings his eldest son Eliab before him. And I'd like to read to you from 1 Samuel 16, and just to see the progress of Samuel as the oldest son of Jesse comes before him. And he thinks, so only God knows his thoughts. And in, in verse 6 of 1 Samuel 16, it says, Samuel thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So he, he's got this thought, and he's like sharing it with God. He's just got, he sees this, this young man, and he thinks, this must be the Lord's anointed. This is the guy. And then we find how God answers him. In verse 7, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, now again, don't miss the miracle. I mean, there wasn't some trumpet, some angel at this point. It was Samuel sitting there looking there, people all around. There's this buzz going on, and here's a guy coming in front of him. And in the midst of all of this, he had such an ability to hear God that in the midst of this, he can hear God speaking, even contrary to his own thoughts. It wasn't his own thought, and it, and it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Now I'm, I'm intrigued by this. It's like we see with Samuel, he's hearing it so developed that he could have this conversation with God in a crowd. He could hear God, and he didn't just get a download of information. Like, no, not that one. Actually, he has this conversation. Surely this must be him, Lord. Surely he's your anointed. And the Lord says, now let me explain to you how I work. I don't look at the outward, I look at the heart. And he has this whole conversation, and there's crowds of people all around him. He had this ability to hear God in the midst of all kinds of things going on, all kinds of voices must have been happening, and yet we find this incredible development in this man's life. 
how he could hear God. And it's for me an encouragement for all of us that God wants us to grow in our ability to hear him. And the way that we communicate with him is very precious. So this is my introduction. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to give three points from Samuel's first encounter with the voice of God that I believe will help us to also progress in our hearing from God. And I, I would like to take you to the key text I'm going to be working from for this morning. It's way back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, and round about verse 17 to 21. This is the occasion straight after this little boy had just heard from God. And it, for me, it's the key as to why he progressed so far into being somebody that could hear and bring the word of God. So I'd love to read this passage to you, and then I'm going to draw my three points from there. 1 Samuel 3, start there in verse 18, but just to run up to that, Eli came to him and the next morning after he knew that the little boy had heard from God, and he says, you must tell me everything. Now he got a very terrible word. It's a frightening word that this little boy got. And so here was this old man who was kind of looking after him, and he could have thought, well, I've heard from God, but I don't want to dishonor this old man. I don't want to, and he might have just softened the message or whatever. But in verse 18, it says there, so Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, the priest said to him, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Verse 19 says there, and Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. Verse 21. And the Lord, the Lord appeared again at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now we can rush through this passage. But I want to say there's so many keys here as how we can develop in hearing what God has said. The first thing that I want to point out, it says there in verse 18 that he told everything that he had heard. So yeah, was a young boy from the start, what God gave him, he was faithful with. I want to say, firstly, if we want to grow in hearing God, we need to be faithful with what he has already said. It's a key principle. What God has said to us, be faithful with it. Yes, he's this little guy, he gets this message. The priest says, tell me everything, and he tells him everything, and he did nothing. And when you read on in verse 19, and it says, and none of his words fell to the ground. In other words, he was faithful with what God told him. He spoke them out so that none of his words fell to the ground. He was a faithful person with what God told him. And I believe if we want to grow, the first thing we've got to learn is we've got to be faithful with God, what God has already said. And in our day, I know we have got great privileges in our day, even as compared to the Old Testament times. We've got the written word of God, the Bible. I want to say the scriptures is what God has already said. And so if we want to grow in hearing God, we've got to be faithful with what he's already said. We've got to be faithful with what is in the scriptures. Some people describe the Bible as the revealed word of God. You don't need to get another voice from heaven to tell you what's written in the Scriptures. It's already revealed to us. We need to be faithful with what is already revealed to us. And I think this is so important for us because sometimes we've got things that we can clearly see from the Scriptures and not everything we can understand in the Bible, but there's some things that are so clear and we're not faithful with that. But now we want God to speak something else to us and something else. But he's saying, but you need to be faithful with what I've already said to you. And there's so many examples of this we can think of. So often, I mean, this is an example, but very often one finds water baptism is such a thing. It's so clear in the scriptures, if you've come to Christ as a believer, that you must be water baptized. And you should be baptized as quickly as possible after you come to know Christ. And sometimes people just read that and they ignore that or, or whatever, say, well, I'll get to it some other time. And then they say, but God speak to me. But he says, I've already spoken you must be faithful with what I've already told you. So we need to understand this principle. We need to be faithful with what God has said. But there's another aspect to it. We have the revealed will of God. But there's another aspect how God speaks to us, and that is what one could call the secret will of God. Things that is not 
clearly revealed in Scripture. God wants to guide us. God wants to lead us. God wants to speak to us about all kinds of manner of things. Perhaps about your spouse, who you should get married to, about where you should live, and all these kind of things. God wants to speak to us. We're not going to find it in the Scriptures directly. It is secret, not secret as in God doesn't want to show us, but He wants us to come and to hear and to hear the specifics of our life. He wants to reveal things to us that are currently hidden or things we don't understand. And that's the, the secret will of God. So we've got these two lines that God communicates to us through. His revealed will, and we must be faithful to that. And we've got his secret will that we need to understand God wants to speak to us because we are just told in Romans chapter 8 that if we are sons of God, we are to be led by the Spirit, which means we need to be hearing what God wants us to do in the specifics of life. And so we have these two things. And when you bring those two together, we find two incredibly important principles that we must not neglect if we are to grow in hearing God. The first is nothing God ever says in His secret will to us can ever contradict what's in the Bible. We've got to understand that God will never contradict His revealed Word. Nothing He tells you to guide you can ever go against what He's told already in Scripture. So we're faithful to that. The second thing is, the Bible cannot replace the direct leading of God through our lives. And when we ignore either one of those two, we get into big trouble. Because I do find some Christians say, well, I've got the Bible, I don't have to hear God anymore. Everything I need to know is in the Bible. We get into trouble. Because we need to be led by the Spirit. We need to be hearing God. And there's many things about that. And the other thing is, well, I'm just led by the Spirit. And we get people that are doing all kinds of things. But we can see clearly in the Scriptures, you shouldn't be doing that. And so we have to put those two together. The revealed will of God, we are faithful to that. But we are also those that are saying, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? If you can think... Some of the most common ways in the Bible how God speaks to us to reveal His secret will to us. Or we know we can study the Bible for ourselves, but there are other ways, and we can find so many examples of this, how God speaks to us about guiding our lives, about decisions for our lives. Even like this morning, there were these words that came, and they, God speaks to us. But we can find in the Scriptures the most common way, other than personal Bible study, the most common way we find God speaking was through the anointed preaching of the Word. When God speaks through the anointed preacher, we can find like in Acts chapter 2, they were cut to the heart, and there comes conviction when there's anointed preaching. But God says, what are you doing with what you've heard? Be faithful with what you have already heard. That's why we say it's so important that if you're sitting in a sermon and something convicts you, that you don't wait and think, well, I'll, I'll go back and visit this, revisit the sermon later. Actually, on the spot, when God speaks, be faithful. Make adjustments right there and then. Another way God speaks, we find in the Bible, He brings deep inner conviction. We come to this realization, God has spoken to me through some means or other, and I've got a conviction and it won't let me go. We need to be faithful with that. Another way is God speaks to us is very often through when we're coming together like this to worship in church. God speaks to us through the times of worship as we gathered corporately together. We can think, think of the example in Acts chapter 13. They were gathered together as the church and they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. And the Holy Spirit said in the midst of that, God communicates very often when we are gathered together in worship. God communicates very often when we are in private worship. We read our in Revelations 1, it says John was in the Spirit and the Lord's band to speak to him. He was, he was in a place of devotion with God privately and God spoke to him. We can get spoken to by God through prophetic words and other gifts. And so we need to be those that are hearing, but then we need to say, am I faithful with what God has already said? I felt it so strongly on my life this week as I said, God, I'm so longing for you to speak, to guide me. And I just began to pray, and I said, Lord, is there anything that you've told me in the last while that I've not attended to? Is there anything you want to take me back to, to speak to? And that, for me, is the first place we must go looking if we're finding God's voice has grown quiet in our lives. Perhaps you haven't heard God speak, because why must God speak again and again and again when he's already spoken, and we've done nothing with it? So it might be a place for some of us here today to say, God, is there something you've told me and I've just put it on the back burner? We need to say, Lord, we put it there. I want to be faithful with what you've already said. So that's the first key, I believe, to grow in hearing God. The second one that I find from this passage from Samuel is it says there, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. <laughs> 
The second verse I want to read for that is it says in verse 21, it says, The Lord revealed himself to Samuel again. And we can pick up it was again and again and again. And we have this beautiful picture that the presence of the Lord came, spoke with Samuel. Samuel was faithful, and God revealed himself to him. So I want to say, the way we grow in hearing God, secondly, is that it is developed in an active working of the presence of God in our lives. It wasn't just God downloading information into Samuel's head, sending like a text message into his mind that he could deliver the word. But it was this active presence of God. It says the Lord was with him. An amazing picture for me. The Lord was with him, and in his presence, he gave him his word. And Samuel was faithful with his word that he got in his presence. And then it says, and then God revealed himself through his word. So we have this interaction, and it actually shows us two beautiful things of hearing from God. The one is that God's presence is the place where we hear God. It's in his presence where he speaks to us. He doesn't shout to us from afar, generally speaking, but it's in his presence he speaks to us. And I want to say, in the New Testament, there's a beautiful word that talks of this relationship of God's presence and God's speaking. It's the word fellowship with God. John uses it in his first letter. Paul uses it. He writes at the end of 2 Corinthians. He says, I love you to know the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May it be with you. We have this realization that it's the presence of God, and this word fellowship means it's an interaction, a communication between us and God in His presence. It's not just a download, and God's over there, and He sends us a, a telegram. But it's in His presence He speaks to us. And so we have this beautiful thing. And I want to say, if you're battling to experience the presence of God, and you're battling to hear God speak to you, you've got to ask yourself the question, in the New Testament, it's clearly shown to us that we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is not the same as salvation. It is a distinct experience. We can read that through in the book of Acts. But it is the baptism in the Holy Spirit that can break open and fill us with God's presence that we can begin to actively hear and experience God's presence. There's a particular account of this. There were some Ephesian believers. They were already believers in Acts chapter 19. But they never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And Paul comes along and he meets them and he asks them this question. He says in Acts 19 verse 1, he says, um, in verse 2, he says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And they answered, No. I haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. And Paul explains, he baptizes them, and then he lays hands on them. And in verse 6 it says, And when he laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. So what had happened? The baptism in the Holy Spirit opened them up to the hearing of God's voice and being able to speak out what God was saying, which is what the prophetic gift there that was had. So I want to say it's very important for us that we need to understand to grow in hearing God. This entry point is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And this active presence of, the, of God speaking with us is for us such a critical thing to understand that God doesn't speak just by giving us words. He speaks to us as one that comes and he has fellowship with us. And through fellowship with him, we hear his words. But now, I think it's so important for us to realize that there's a contrast in the book of Samuel. Because we've got all this wonderful stuff of Hannah and Samuel. But there was a contrast here. There, were, there was Eli the priest who had what the writer of Samuel says. He had two worthless sons. When you have a look at the contrast between them and Samuel, is that they'd got to a place they were not hearing God anymore. They were in a place of disobedience. They blocked their ears. They hardened their hearts. They were not hearing God. They didn't know God. And yet they were the priests. And so what happened in that case, the nation of Israel put great confidence in the Ark of the Covenant, which was the, the symbolic representation that God was with them as a nation. So they had this Ark of the, the Covenant, like this big box that represented the, dwelling, the, the manifest presence of God among them. So the Philistines were attacking them. They didn't hear God. They said, but we've got the Ark. So they say, right, take the Ark and let's go and attack the Philistines. So they bring the Ark into the battle. 
And they're carrying the ark out, and the Philistines initially shrink back, and they see this coming, and they said, no, let's go for them. They go in, they attack them, they overrun them, they steal the ark of God, and they take it with them, and this massive disaster happens in the nation. And as I was reading this, at the same time, it says Samuel was ministering before the Lord. This is this massive contrast. And it speaks to me about sometimes as believers, even as Christians, we can be in a place where we put our confidence in a God who doesn't speak. And we have come across Christians, you ask them, what is God saying? And they're like, look at you as though you're speaking weird. They think, are you strange? Now, what is God saying? You're facing all this trouble. The Philistines are overrunning you, whatever. The, and you ask them, what is God saying? And they say, what? And we've kind of got this confidence that because I'm a Christian, because God dwells in me, that actually I can just put confidence in a God who doesn't speak. And so that was their problem. They, 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 they wanted the protection of God, but they didn't want God to speak and to intervene into their lives. One of the joys we, we've had in our journey with Rudolf and Sonia over the years is that even in our difficult times, we, we had difficult times with my daughter's health, very often they would come and say, Alan, we've been praying for you and we've got a word for you. And they'd give us things that to this day have given us such courage. And for me, when we, Delaine and I used to lead this church, we always try to lead it in a way that says, God, what are you saying for this church? What's the direction we want to go? Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying about leaders that we must bring on? Lord, what are you saying? And it's such a joy for us to have leaders that are leading here, and we know that's the way they live. They live in this place. Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? And we might not always get it right perfectly, but such an important thing that we've got a God who speaks. He wants to lead us. We can't just trust on our past. We can't just trust on the fact that we're Christians. We can't just trust on all those things like what the, the people of Israel did. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, and God was speaking to him. And ultimately, the one that heard God came out and said, right, put away your idols. And they put away their idols, and they went in and they defeated the Philistines because there was somebody that was hearing from God. But the second aspect of hearing from God is that it says, but God revealed himself through his word. For me, it's this beautiful, almost like this dance. Etienne shared a vision of us dancing with God in this supernatural lifestyle. But God speaks to us in his presence, but then he reveals what he is like by what he speaks. And then we get to know him more by what he speaks, and when we know him more, we can hear him better. And you see this beautiful cycle. That God speaks and he reveals himself. Moses was somebody that didn't just know what God was saying. He was commended. You will find it in Exodus 33. You'll find it in Psalm 25 and one of the other Psalms. Moses wasn't just somebody that knew what God was saying. It says, but Moses knew God's ways. Which is something far deeper than just getting a word from God. Getting a prophecy from God. He knew God's ways, which means he knew who God was. God's word taught him what God was like, and so he could understand what God's ways were. And there's something beautiful when we know God's ways, is that he can communicate with us, not just with words, but he can communicate by giving us his heart, by giving us his deep longings. And we understand not just because we've got a word from God, but because we know his ways. And it's a greater level of hearing from God when we not only know his words, but through his words he reveals who he is. And because we know who he is, we know his ways. I hope all that makes sense. But we can find Samuel when, he's, when he said, this isn't the anointed of God of David's older brother. It wasn't just that he got a word from God. God showed him his ways. He says, God looks at the heart. You see, that's what the ways of God are like. It's not just some information. Not just a revelation with facts, but he, God shows his ways. And Moses was commended as the one who knew his ways. The disciples of Jesus, it's interesting that there came a point in their journey with Jesus where Jesus says in John 15, we jump to this verse too quickly, I think, sometime. He says, I no longer call you servants. It's not just that he didn't call them servants before. They were, he, he called them servants till the point, John 15. And he says, but now things have changed. I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Why do I call you friends? He says, because you've got to know my ways. He says, 
You've got to see something. The verse goes like this. He says, a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends. For all that I've heard, I've made known to you. They've got to know God's ways. They've got to know Jesus' ways. Not perfectly. So he says, I call you friends. You, there's another level of hearing from God when we know his ways. And we see this from Samuel. Some of God's ways. God is a God of peace. So sometimes we don't get a word, but we get the sense of peace. Because that's who God is. He's the God of peace. He brings peace. The devil will drive us. The devil will chase us, but God steadies us. Confidence. God makes me confident. So I might not get a word, but I can sense something of his ways when I feel the confidence rising in my heart. I know this is the right direction because there's confidence in God. There's an awareness of who Jesus is that grows. Then I know this is God because I know that's his way. He always wants to exalt Jesus in my midst. And so those are things how we can learn God's ways. And it almost is a deeper level of hearing from God that we see. My third and last point, and I want to bring some stories from our lives in this point. But what I find, and especially from Hannah's side, Samuel's mom, also from Samuel's response, that we need to understand there's an atmosphere, if I can use that word, that we can create in our lives that will lead us to deeper hearing from God. We can create an environment or an atmosphere for God to speak to us. And I think this is so important because I find that God is not one who wants to speak over the noise of everything else going on in our lives. But he wants to speak like with Samuel. He, he went apart and he said, okay, Lord, speak, I'm listening. It's an atmosphere of hearing from God. Sometimes we, the, the atmosphere in our lives, the environment in our lives is, is so toxic, so full of fear and anxiety and, and rushing around and, and all kinds of things. And there's no atmosphere for God to speak. But like Samuel, he, he went and he says, Lord, okay, I'm listening. And it's important for us to realize, and, and when we look at Hannah's life, I find it is such a rich example for us on how God speaks. And what I find, when she went praying, she had this deep longing, and she prayed, and it actually said no words came out of her mouth, but she was praying nonetheless. She was in a place where actually she understood that she could pour out her heart to God, and that for me is an atmosphere for God to speak. When we are willing to say, God, I know you know my heart, I'm going to pour out my heart to God, and it created an atmosphere where she could share the struggles and the battles that she was going through in her life. So I want to share a story from Dalian's life that relates to this. One of the beautiful things of, of her, her walk with God that I've seen is she's always willing to pour out her heart to God. Whatever, she'll be pouring it out. The next thing else, she's praying, pouring out her heart to God. And so there was a time in our lives before we started leading the church, before we came into full-time ministry, I was working, Dalian was working. I had a pressure job. She had a job that she was battling to get through all the work, and we were on eldership in the church as well. So we had these, and, and it was just like our life was closing in on us, and so Delian went to God, and she says, God, it feels to me like we've got these walls around us. She says, there's these walls here, and there's these walls here, and there's Alan's job, and there's my job, and the church's demands on us, and there's these walls of business that are holding us in. As she was praying, she felt God say to her, Go and read Isaiah chapter 26. She turned there, didn't know it was written there, and there it says, God says, I will appoint salvation for your walls. She just read that scripture, and she knew God was giving her a promise. Salvation is going to come for the walls. She, said, she just used those words, and she got that scripture. And then things got worse for a whole year. Her lives got even busier. And one day, Delian was praying, and she said, in her heart, she said, I think God's forgotten about our walls. It's forgotten these walls, and they're just getting higher and higher and thicker and thicker, and we've got these walls, and we can't manage to get through life with all these things. And she, she said, okay, God, I'm going to pray now. I'm going to pray for five minutes. But in her heart, she says, and at the end of praying for five minutes, I'm going to tell you, Lord, you've forgotten about the walls. She prayed for five minutes. She checked on her watch. At the end of five minutes, she opened her eyes. She said, Lord, I want to tell you now, you've forgotten about the walls. And she felt in her heart, go and read Isaiah chapter 49. Verse 16, so she opened the Bible, didn't know it was there, and here it says, it says, your walls are continually before me. 
And an amazing thing that she knew God says, I haven't forgotten. In fact, the verses before that also speak about, oh, Lord, have you forgotten me? It says, your walls are continually before me. And it was a, a, sometime after that, again praying, you felt very clearly God gave her Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4. And there it says, Jerusalem will be a city without walls. She prayed that and she knew the walls were going to come down. Two days later, the pastor that was leading this church came to see us and he said, I want you to come full time. I want to hand over the church to you. We're moving to a church in Johannesburg. And that day, we said yes to God that day because of this journey. God took away those walls. And it's just an amazing thing of how God wants to speak to us, how we can pour out our hearts to God and he wants to speak and reveal things to us. Another thing about Hannah is that she wouldn't give up on God. She kept pressing in. She desired that whatever God gave her, she wanted to give back to him. You see, that's an atmosphere in our homes, even as parents, that we can create for our children to hear God. It's amazing how God spoke through a child, and yet his mom and Eli didn't hold that his youth against him. But they had the desire that their child would hear God. Above everything else, she wanted her child to hear God. She nurtured this gift that God gave her. So she weaned her and she nurtured this gift and took him at a young age to serve in the presence of God. We must not underestimate God's ability to speak and for our children's ability to hear God speak to him. And then when her, she became pregnant and she gave birth, Hannah burst into the song. It's a song that Mary almost sang word for word later in the New Testament when, when the angel appeared to her. But she sings the song, and it's a song that says, Lord, I exalt in God my Savior. She didn't exalt in her son that he'd given her, but she was thankful to God. She exalted God. Thankfulness is an environment that creates space for us to hear God. Thankfulness. Just to be thankful, no matter what we're going through, to be thankful. Another lesson, and i got one or two stories very quickly. But it amazes me how God chose to teach a child to hear his voice. And that doesn't mean that age disqualifies us, but it does teach us that to hear God, if we want to create an environment to hear God, we need to come to God with a childlike attitude. Not childish, childlike attitude. And what that means to me is that children don't, haven't learned all the sophistication of adults where we begin to be something that we're not. God doesn't want to speak to you when you are acting something that you're not. And we're so good at that as adults. We're so good at being what life expects us to be. And then we bring that into the presence of God and He says, who are you? I want to speak to the, the real person in there. And I found that in my life. Sometimes we're so busy and there's so much expectation on our lives. And I'm an elder, I'm a dad, I'm a becoming a granddad and all these things. And there's all these things that I've got to live up to. And God says, but where are you? But he chose to speak to a child. They don't have all those filters and sophistications and things in their lives. And that's how God wants to speak. Because he loves you. He wants to speak to you. He wants you to be real with him. He wants you to bring the longings of your heart to him. There was a time where Dalian went. She was just saved a few years and she was in a home group. And they said, right, we're going to see this gift of prophecy released here with us. And they were going through this and they said, we're going to pray and you must get a word for somebody in the home group. Dalian says, and she sat in the home group and she prayed and she prayed and she says, nothing, nothing. No word, nobody at all. And she came out of the home group thinking, but you know, sure, I can't hear God. But the fact is that God began to speak to her in other ways. That wasn't the way he wanted to use it. There was a reality of who she is. And sometimes we can get in a box of hearing God. We've got to hear God in that spot, in that way. But actually, I've seen the most incredible things the way Dalian hears from God. There was a time where, where we were really praying outside for our husband, for our daughter. And one day our daughter phoned and she says, Mom, won't you please pray? I really want to meet my husband. So she put the phone in and she prayed. And she felt God spoke to her. 
We never told our daughter this till much later, but she felt God spoke to her and said she's going to meet her husband in two days. She spoke to me about it, but we never told anybody else. We didn't want to any influence the decision. The following day, my daughter phoned. She says, she won't believe who I bumped into. An old friend from years back, Nathan May. It's now her husband. They've been married for some time. But what I just see, the incredible gift that we must not put God in a, in a, a box where we think we've got to hear God in a certain way. Be yourself with God. Let him speak to you. He wants to speak to you in the way that you are. Keep a soft heart. Soft heart like a child. Soft heart to hear God. In bringing this to a close, I want to say, hearing God, one word from God. Just one word. I found it. I can get one word, just one word from God. It can give me so much joy, so much courage, so much confidence. The most beautiful thing in all the world. Hearing from God is not a thing that we do to get information. It's fellowship with God. It's Him revealing Himself to us. Us getting to know His ways. And being led by the Holy Spirit. So I'd like to pray for us. And I want to say, if you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, I want to say, there were so many testimonies in this building of how the baptism in the Holy Spirit called the breakthrough to start to hear God actively speak through His presence in your life. If you've not been prayed for for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I want to ask you at the end of the meeting, come up and ask the people at the front, please pray for me specifically. I want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But I also want to pray for us. I'd love to ask you if you could just for a moment just close your eyes. I'd like you just to consider something. I want to ask, how's it going with your fellowship with God, with Him speaking to you? How's it going? I'm not asking it in a condemning way. I'm asking it in a longing way. God longs for fellowship with you. He wants to speak to you. For who you are, the real person, he wants to speak to you. How's it going? And if it's not going that well, if you haven't heard God for some time, or it feels like life's just rushing on, this is a critical message. This is what sons of God and daughters of God do, says Paul. We are led by the Spirit. We hear God. He speaks. So I want to ask you, if it's not going that well, I just... Has God spoken to you in the past that you've left on the back burner somewhere? Maybe go and fetch that word and bring it back and say, okay, God, I give attention to what you've already said. Or maybe you're so tired and so rushed that there's no environment to hear God. Maybe you say it's impossible, but really this is life critical. If that's the case, get help. Do something that you can create a space where you can say, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. We can't go on when we're not hearing God speak. Where are we going to end up? Is to hear God. We are His sons and daughters. He wants to speak to us. I want to ask, how's it going with your fellowship with God? What's the environment like for God to speak in your heart? Is it a place where God... It's got your full attention. Or is it just too much other noise? God wants to speak to you. I'd like to pray for us. Just for soft hearts, open ears. Lord God, in Jesus' name, thank you that you're a God that speaks, who reveals, who shows us your ways that we might know you, that we might continue to walk in your favor. That's who you are. So we pray for our own ears. We say, Lord, help us to be attentive, to have open ears, to say, speak, Lord. Speak into the normal things I'm going through, my wrestles, my struggles, but speak, Lord. I, I want to I want to invite you to speak into the situations of my life, even the painful ones. I want you to speak, Lord. I soften my heart to your word. I long to hear from you, God. Whatever you have, Lord, 
And what you give me, I want to give back to you as a gift to serve you in Jesus' name. I want to close with an opportunity for anybody that's come to this meeting that doesn't know this wonderful, speaking, living God. His name is Jesus Christ. If you've never, ever received Jesus Christ as your Savior, please pray this prayer with me if that is what you want to do today. If you want to receive Him as your Savior and as your Lord, pray this prayer with me. And at the end, just would you just put a hand up at the end of the prayer that we can just honor what He's done in your life. Jesus Christ, will you come into my heart and forgive me of my sins? Be my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you from this day. I want to walk with you as my God and my Lord and my Savior. Will you wash away my sin and make me a child of God from this day on? In Jesus' name, amen.